What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here. Three games, three unbeaten, three clean sheets. It's looking pretty good. Uh, still, kind of what I've been saying though, still gotta work on some things, you know, and obviously it's still very, very early days. I'm not saying this is all two trolls problem, but the fact that we're still not really firing very well and, you know, the, the shot count is just it's not great, you know, the amount of possession we have, we're not creating enough chances, and even when we do, the shots aren't looking that great. It's just still not enough going forward. Now, one thing I will say is that under Tuchel, we've looked a lot more defensively solid, and part of that is because he's gone with the back three, which, you know, I think suits us very well because we've got some solid center backs, and it provides us a bit more cover, and we can get our, our full backs, which are more wing backs now, we can get them up the pitch. Um... So it just, we've looked a lot more defensively solid, a little bit more shaky in this game, but I think a lot of that is down to the three teams that we faced didn't really go at us like some of the teams will. I, I'll be curious to see if Sheffield decides to go at us, because they're a team that can, you know, and they that's what they've been doing recently, and it's been working for them. Um, and it's, it's more like going at us as in, like, they get the ball and then they get down the pitch very quickly. With Wolves, Burnley, and Tottenham, none of them look to really break very well. Like, most of the time it would just sit back and maybe if you get it up to your front man, then you can go. But we never really gave them a chance to. You know, we pressured very quickly, they had to boot it downfield, and then our defenders swept up everything that came their way. Um, where that changed in this game, though, is second half, we look slow. And I don't know if it was the weather... It was kind of slow in the first half, but Tottenham looked really slow, and we just looked a little bit quicker than they did. But second half, they picked up their game a little bit, and we didn't. We kind of stayed the same pace, and so they started to take control as the second half wore on. Uh, we still created, I think, the better chances in the second half, but overall it felt much more even, and it felt more like Tottenham were going to come back into it because we just... I don't know, we started to slow down, we stopped tracking, we started giving the ball away way too cheaply. So it was like we kind of abandoned that possession and we started to be the team that sat back and just looked to boot it down the field and hope for the best. Which, you know, we do have very good counterattacking players, but the problem is, is when we're booting it down the field, we're not looking to get it over the top of the defense and let them run onto it. We're just kind of get rid of it. You know, wherever it's going to go, it's going to go. And it's not, whenever you do that, it's not built very well to set up a counterattack. Um, so yeah, it just, it really kind of fell apart for us as the second half wore on. It Honestly, they should have equalized. They had way too many chances that they didn't capitalize upon. And that's because they're kind of in the same boat we are. They've been on a pretty, well, we were under Lampard. They've just, they've hit this rough patch where they're lacking confidence Kane's not playing, so now they're lacking their main man that's been creating for him this season. And so you can just tell whenever they're shooting, it's not hit with a lot of conviction. There's not a lot of great shots that they're creating. So they're they're in a very same situation that we were, you know, several games ago when Lampard, you know, we started to fall off the wagon. Um, I'll, be, I'll be curious to see, you know, when Kane does come back, if that turns things around for him or not. But as far as Tuchel's concerned, though, I do feel like, Based on what I was seeing, you know, they would cut to him sometimes on the touchline, and I could see some of the frustration. So things aren't really playing out how he wants them to. And I'm kind of glad for that, you know, because if he were just sort of over there and he weren't really reacting and, you know, we created we created a decent opportunity, but there was a better ball to be played, and then he just sort of didn't really react, I'd be worried that, okay, well, is he just happy with what we're doing? Is he happy with the slow build-up play? But there were a couple times where the the right ball wasn't played, you know, they tried the wrong pass or they tried to take it themselves and he was frustrated, you know, they cut to him on the sideline and he's pointing, you know, get it out wide. So clearly the game plan wasn't really fully being listened to today. And so I hope once we can get that game plan sort of implemented into our, our play and it becomes a more second nature for everyone, I hope that can really help us start to play with a lot more confidence and look not just the dominant team in possession, but the dominant team in chances and goals and score lines as well. Because that's the one thing that we're still lacking. You know, we dominate possession. We're doing pretty pretty well when it comes to defense. We're keeping other teams out. But we've got to start finishing. We've got to start getting these chances, creating them, and then finishing them off. Because it's still not there. Um, 
So, with all that being said, though, as far as the lineup is concerned, not a bad lineup. You know, same back three, which we'll talk about that a bit more when I talk about Silva. Um, I don't mind seeing the same back three. You know, I like the fact most times you want to keep your defense the same. You don't want to rotate your defense a whole lot because, you know, you want them to be playing together. So it makes sense not to rotate them a whole lot. Uh, Alonzo keeps his place a little iffy about that. I'd prefer to see Chilwell try it out on the wing back position just because I feel like he's got a bit more pace than Alonzo does. So in a game like this, whenever, you know, we're facing a team that's got a lot of pace coming down the, the wings, I'd like to see Chilwell see what he could do out on the, uh, the wing back role. And then James is on the right wing back. Um, not a bad position for him. And, you know, I like the fact he's getting into this, this side and slowly playing himself back in because he has been out with an injury for a little bit. Uh, Jorginho and Kovacic in the middle, probably the only disappointing thing about the lineup for me. Why Jorginho again? <laughs> he had a good game. I'll, I'll give him that. He played well against Burnley, but <laughs> he's three games in a row and you've got Conte back. I feel like Mount could easily slip into that role as well as one of those two holding midfielders, and he could easily do just as much as Jorginho is doing. But when you're playing it against a team like Tottenham, you want a bit more grit. You want a bit more of a get stuck in, you know, speedy player type. Some Kovacic fits there, Conte fits there, Mount fits there. Jorginho doesn't. He's not quick enough. He's not strong enough. He got bullied a lot today. He got turned a lot today. Um, now he did do some clever turns as well when we were when we had possession. But my problem is, is when we were out of possession, we really were hurting in the midfield because he's just not good enough to be that defensive mid. Um, so either he's got to get himself stronger, which he's had what two years now to do that, and he's still the same kind of weaker player. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's just a little frustrating to see that again. And as far as the front three are concerned, not too bad. Um, you have Mount kind of... It was almost like Mount was sitting in the cen center behind Werner and hudson Adoy. But the truth is, is that that front three can kind of operate however you know they need to. They can make runs across and somebody makes a run out wide for them. So it was kind of a fluid front three. It wasn't always set up where Mount, hudson Adoy, Werner... Sometimes it was Werner in the middle, hudson Adoy, Mount were in the flanks. It just kind of depended on the situation. Um, but the one thing I will say, and I'll talk about hudson Adoy a bit more when I get to him, but I do think this position isn't his strong suit. I really do think he'd be better suited to a wingback role. Just because when I'm watching him play, at least in this front three, he's not the best player when it, when it comes to getting the ball, receiving it inside and having to take touches inside. He looks a lot better when he's out on the flank and he has a chance to take a touch and drive down the line and cut it in. So whenever he's receiving in the middle, not that he doesn't have quick feet, but he's not the best when it comes to playing in tight areas. So I do think that having him more central here didn't really help him today. Um, I think that's much better suited for Pulisic to play there, or you know, if you want to give Zayek another run out, I think he could do it, or Zayek. I always forget how to say his name. Um, but yeah, the other two, you know, you got Werner coming in. I would have preferred to see, you know, Giroud just because typically Tottenham like to sit a bit deeper with Mourinho. You know, you, you tend to see him kind of sit deep and look to counterattack um, unless they're, you know, the better team. So I would have liked to see Giroud get in there just because he is much more of a battling type of striker, whereas Werner looks to get in behind. But whenever their defense is sat on the top of the 18, getting in behind means the ball's going to the keeper. So it wasn't really a game for Werner. Um, that was the that was the only other change I really would have made there. But as far as individuals are concerned, Mendy didn't really have much to do. A little concerning on a couple of them because there were a couple moments where he caught just got caught standing, um, and obviously it went wide. But if it had been on target, I don't know if he would have gotten there. And it's just it's a concern because it's kind of a, it's a Kepa thing. You know, that's one of the frustrations I have with Kepa is that whenever shot comes in, sometimes he plants and then he's just done. And there were a couple moments, you know, that one of the better chances of the second half was uh, cross comes into Vicinius and header just past that back post. And I just see Mindy here like planted. And I'm like, if that's on target, I don't know if he's saving that. So, I, I hope it's not getting into his game where he's becoming a bit lazier. He's not really pushing himself 
because he started off very well and we've seen he's made some mistakes. I hope that's not getting to him. I hope he's not taking it easy. I hope he's continuing to push himself because we need him to be the keeper that we know he can be. You know, he's, he's shown that he's a, a fantastic. <clears throat> oh my God. Someone scratched my throat. That was awful. But we've seen that he can be a fantastic keeper, a great shot stopper. He gets across the goal very quickly. But whenever I start to see him more planted and the shot's going just past the post, but he's not really moving for it, that's why I'm concerned that if that is on target, would you move to get it, or do you know that it's going past the post and that's why you didn't move? Um, so kind of a, a what-if type of situation, but a little concern for me. As far as the back three are concerned, um, Spilly Cueta, solid game today, uh, was not helped at all by the referee because he had to deal with Son, and basically any time he touched him, Son would just fall over and get the foul. Um, so it was a little frustrating for him. He even got a yellow for a nothing foul <laughs> in the second half, um, again, on Son. So, but he dealt with everything pretty well. I want to see a little bit more, I guess, communication with whoever that wing back is because there were some times that it felt like Things are going on behind him, and he's just expecting, you know, James to have it. And James, unfortunately, is kind of in a little bit of a rut where defensively he's not been tracking back very well. He's not been tracking runs very well. So I feel like Dave, as the experienced veteran defender, needs to be talking to him and say, hey, get back. You know, we just lost it. Get back. You know, keeping everything in front of him instead of just kind of focusing on his man here and expecting James still has it, and the ball goes over him, and then... James isn't there to, to cover. So just a little bit more communication there. And that's always kind of been, I feel like, even though he leads by his work rate and his work ethic, I feel like his verbal, you know, leading vocally is the term I'm looking for. Leading vocally is something that he's never really been, at least from what I can tell, it's never been one of his strong suits. So I'd like to see him do that a bit more, especially when he's helping James kind of build him, building him up and stuff. Silva had a very solid game. Unfortunately, you know, whether it's he's played way too much and now he's just he's exhausted, you know, his body's given out. I mean, he is 36, 37 almost, I think. I think he turned 37 this year or last year. So, he is a bit older and so he can't go every game like he used to. You know, I'm I'm sure back in the day he could play 3 games in a week and would be fine. But yeah, especially in the Premier League, games are so fast, games are so tough. I wouldn't expect him to play every single match. So I'm a little disappointed with Tuchel as far as the fact that he didn't really give him a chance to get a rest. You know, and now there's a chance that could be a hamstring, don't really know. A little disappointing there from Tuchel's point of view. Um, but before he went out, you know, still doing everything he does very well. Rudiger had a couple moments of nerves, nervy nervousness I don't know I don't know the right word for it but just there are a couple moments that I'm watching I'm not really sure if he's picking up on the situation and it it's making me nervous you know get back get back you know track back and it, it just happened a few times it didn't really affect us very much but there were definitely moments where it just felt like ball goes in behind and he's not really read the situation and now he's in a foot race with somebody and he's quick you know he can beat most people in a foot race but there were a couple times where he's up against you know somebody who's just as fast as he is, and they got that one extra step on him. So now he's having to more do damage control than he is beating them them to the ball and getting getting rid of it easily. Um, so just some more reading of the situation better from him would be very helpful in my opinion. Uh, and then Christensen, I'll go ahead and talk about him as well. Came on for Silva in the first half. Uh, looked looked solid, you know, couple moments again where he got caught out of position, um, and just, you know, it, it's okay, I think, in a back three, if you're going to step out, you've got two to cover, but it can't happen too much, and especially against better teams, you know, well, obviously Tottenham's not a bad team, but teams that are in better form, teams that are more attack-minded, if you step out, sometimes that does leave that extra hole that they needed, and your other two defenders didn't read the situation, that can cause issues. So just a, I guess, again, for him, it's always been kind of a reading of the situation and tracking the runs a bit better. But aside from that, I mean, I thought he looked very solid. I thought he played very well defensively and also on the ball. I thought he looked 
confident, which is something he's always really had in his game. So, um, but yeah, for those three, it was, it was a good game, in my opinion. Uh, James on the right side. Already talked a bit about his defensive issues that he's having. And, yeah, it's just just a matter of you're not getting back. you know. And I know the wingback role isn't supposed to be extremely defensive, but whenever we're on the back foot and you see we've lost the ball, you got to get back. you know, Because you can get up the field all you want, but if you're not tracking back, you're not helping us. And that's that's your job. You got to get back. You got to cover that that far side. And there's just so many times that not just in this game, but in some of the past games when he returned from injury, I'm watching him and I'm thinking you've lost your man. That cross comes in, you're not getting back there. The one header I talked about from Vicinius, you're not goal side of him. You're standing behind him, which means now you've got no chance of beating him to the ball. He didn't even really challenge. He just kind of like ran up and realized it was too late and just kind of hoped to put him off a little bit. But you didn't read the situation. You let him get in front of you, and now he's beating you to the ball, and he's nearly scoring off of it. So it's just stuff he's got to work on, you know, because he's young. He's still, still got a lot of room to grow, but you can't be making dumb decisions like that. You can't be having these mental lapses where you're losing track of your man, especially if you're playing more defensively. Um, on the attack kind of iffy from him, you know, just still not seeing really enough from him going forward, which is what he's supposed to be bringing, you know, that's better than what is Billy Quaita is bringing. And honestly, what Hudson Adoy brought last game, you know, just that attacking intent down the the line. I didn't see much of that from him today. I saw a lot more I guess possession based, but not really looking to keep possession. Just more I would rather just go backwards. I'd rather be safe. And that's not always a bad thing, but in a game like this, whenever they're sitting back, going backwards means they now have a chance to readjust and reorganize. Whereas if you take it down the line, maybe they've not adjusted very well, and now you can get the cross in. And that's something I think Hudson Adoy would bring a lot better to that role than what James does. Um, so yeah, just a little disappointment with him today. Alonzo, not much from him you know, on either side. He didn't really do anything great defensively or awful didn't do anything fantastic or awful on the attack it just he was there you know he had his moments where he was involved but yeah just after I talked about the game you know obviously everybody was talking about you know oh, what a fantastic goal see this is a great idea to bring Alonzo back but really in both of these games aside from the goal he's not done anything to convince me that he is exactly what we need you know he's a good option he's doing his job well enough because we know that's what he can do. He is a good wing back, But there's nothing that I'm seeing that's making me think he's definitely won this spot and I don't want to see anybody else play. I would like to see Chilwell give it a chance. I would like to see, let's see what Emerson can do. You know, I would like to see maybe one of these wings, maybe Ziyech plays out there. I feel like he's not really done anything that's convinced me that he's got this spot and you can't take it away from him yet. Um, so yeah, just again, another very average but... No, nothing bad in his performance today. Um, in the midfield, Jorginho and Kovacic, both of them solid. Uh, Jorginho, though, a few more slip-ups compared to the Burnley game. And again, that's just down to he's not quick enough or strong enough to play in a game like this against Tottenham. You know, He gets turned way too easily. He's not fast enough to make up that ground when he does get turned. And just strength-wise, he's getting beaten in the air. You know, Hoybier is beating him. Um, who was the other one that was in there? I've already forgotten who the other player was. But, you know, he's just he's not winning a whole lot of balls out of the air. He's not really winning anything 50-50. The only time that he looked good was when we had possession in our back line. That's when he looks his best. You know, whenever he's receiving it, he can turn quickly and take the foul, or he's looking to spring it out wide real quick. But that's only part of the game. You know, you can't just do that part of the game when you're sitting as front one of those kind of buffering two. You can't just be good on the attack and then do nothing on defense. You know, you have to do both sides of the ball. And in my opinion, he's not doing enough defensively to really nail down that spot either. So in my opinion, Mount could do more and I think Conte could do more. So if I continue to see him, I'm going to be questioning, you know, what is Tuchel see that he keeps picking him? You know, what did Sari see that he kept picking him? Um, so anyways, Kovacic though, I thought both sides of the ball, you know, he worked hard to win it back on the ball. Very clever again. Couple moments of weird decisions, you know, on the ball, just not great passes, you know, that one awful shot that he had. 
And, um, yeah, there were some moments where it felt like he held on to possession a little too much. He needed to release it quicker. And I don't think that's just him. I think a lot of the players needed to release it quicker today. Um, but for him especially, because he's so good at getting out of that tight spot and then creating that opportunity to get on the break, that release needs to come quicker. You know, Because the quick turn is fantastic, but if you take five more touches after that, now they've had a chance to get back behind the ball again, and now everything's shut down. Whereas if you turn them and then quickly play it up the field, now we have a chance to really go at them. Um, so just a little bit more quickness in springing the counterattack for us. Mount, um, another good game, but the finishing has got to be better. You know, Because he's a player that his final pass, his final shots have been pretty solid this season. Past couple games, they've not been good enough. And while I would still not take him off the pitch because his work rate does so much for us, I will say if he doesn't start to produce soon, it's going to be a little concerning. You know, why isn't he finding the shots? Why isn't his final pass? Why isn't it finding its mark? Why is it so many of these crosses going out of bounds? So a little frustrating, but again, I think so much of what he does off the ball is why you can't not pick him because you know, he works so hard. Now, then again, one thing I will throw out, it's kind of a caution, don't overplay him. You know, because he's already played, th- you know, two games in a row. He did get subbed off at the end of the last one. But don't overplay him to now where he's out of breath, he can't run anymore because you picked him too many games in a row. Do give him a chance to have a rest because he needs to rest eventually. And that's why you know, you've got Havertz. Havertz can fill in that role pretty well. Uh, I think Havertz was injured for this one, but just something going forward to really focus on and really make sure don't do too much with him to where now you've run him to death and now he's not available for a while because he's pulled something. So just kind of a cautionary tale there. Um, But hudson Adoy already talked a little bit about, I just don't think this is his best position. I don't think he was helped today by being more central. He just wasn't nearly as involved as he has been. You know, he still had his moments where he did something pretty clever and created a good chance. But overall, just not really the same Hudson Adoy that I've come to expect. And a lot of that, I do feel like he's more central. You know, when he's out on the wing and he can receive and then drive down the line and cut it in, that's his best game. So whenever you bring him more central, now he's having to play in tight areas. He has to release it quicker. And that's just not what he's best at. So. Hopefully, you know, we'll see him a bit more wide in the next few games and not so much down the center. Uh, But Werner, another game where he had his moments, he worked pretty hard, but just that final shot, again, the final play, the the lack of being clinical. I mean, just, I don't know what else he can do. He's just got to keep working at it. Again, I don't think this was his game either, so I don't think he was helped by that. Um, But... Yeah, I, I hate it for him. Like, I want him to find his touch again and find that that shot again because we've seen he can be a clinical striker. It's just not happening for him right now. So hopefully we'll see that come back to him soon. Um, we, we are kind of being very fluid with our front three, so it's allowed him the opportunity to sort of drift out wide if he needs to and then come back central if he needs to. So he's got the freedom to play. But with that, I do think also there are times whenever he needs to be more central, but now he's shifted out wide. And he's just not great when he's playing out wide. So we'll see what happens in the next few games. I I assume Abraham or Giroud will probably be available for the next one. We'll probably play in the next one. Um, So we'll we'll see if Werner can find his footing in the next few games. But we do have um, Atletico. And we do, we do have the FA Cup. So there are games that he will need to be available for and hopefully will be more effective. Um, subs, last thing to talk about. So the two uh, subs that came on after Christensen, uh, Pulisic came on for Hudson Adoy, which I think was a good move. Pulisic much more, I think, involved in that front three, being more fluid. He is pretty good when he's coming in from the wide areas, receiving it and playing in tight areas. But he's got to work a bit more on that final ball um, because I think that's where his decision making is still, it needs improvement. Because there are times whenever he looks great, he makes the turn, he beats the player, but then as he doesn't know what to do after that. And there was the one run he made where he does fantastic to beat the player, driving into the space, and then he's got Werner to his left, Mount kind of off to his right, 
and then James in a ton of space off to his right. And he decides to just drive down the middle, and I think he tried to flick it to, to Werner or something. And it's just that final ball. You know, you got to see what's out there. You got to see all that space that James is in because you did everything up to that point very well, and then that's where it fell apart. So it's just that last decision, that last judgment. Um, and hopefully, you know, he's still young. Hopefully it'll come as he continues to grow and continues to, to play in these situations. Um, but yeah, I think that was really the main disappointment for him today. It's just not knowing what to do when he got to that final point. Uh, and then Conte, first game back from that the hamstring issue he's been having. And, uh, you know, energetic. He provided a bit more pace and more energy into the midfield. Um, I would have preferred to see him come on for Jorginho over Kovacic just because, again, I don't think Jorginho was really helping us on defense, and that's a lot of what we were doing for the last, like, 15 minutes. So I would have preferred to see Jorginho come off so that way Kovacic and Conte could sort of really run the midfield, you know, because that's what they both do very well is they both have a lot of speed and energy. Um, but with that being said, Conte, you know, all over the pitch – I would, I would like to see him a bit more contained. I would like to see him reined in to be that buffer. Because whenever he is allowed to roam and he's allowed to get up the field, sometimes that hurts us because he's not back to defend, and that's really where we need him. Um, so I would like to see him reined in a little bit and Tuchel say, hey, you know, I like the energy and I like the fact that you're trying to press high, but I prefer you stay a bit more defensive and central so that way you can block off anything that's coming at us. Um, cause that's what he does the best. So, but yeah, overall, again, it's three win or not three wins, three unbeaten, two wins in a row, both or all three are clean sheets under Tuchel. So things are improving. You know, we are looking more solid defensively. We are playing with a bit more confidence. We just still need to finish. We still need to find that finishing touch because not every game is going to end where the other team gets five chances and misses all of them, you know? Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes going forward. Sheffield on Sunday, it's going to be a difficult game, you know, and all of these games are not going to be easy, but Sheffield is a team that they need points right now. And they are, they're, they're hitting their bounce. They're coming back They They've had a rough season, but they're finding their footing. It's going to be a rough game for us. You know, we're going to have to be dealing with a team that's in a lot of confidence right now, whereas we're still struggling for confidence. I think even with the new manager, so it'll be interesting to see how Tuchel handles it, to see you know, how much of the game do we dominate. Do we still keep all that possession? Can we find the finish? A lot of questions to be answered. But with all that being said, that's it for this game. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? What else do you think Tuchel could be doing? And what players would you like to see given a chance? Let me know. We can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for your Chelsea reviews. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.